Admiral, uh, you mentioned that the Coast Guard is defined by its mission, its people, and its tradition. As Commandant, you've outlined a strategic direction for the Coast Guard that honors these elements and fosters its motto, Semper Paratus, always ready. Would you give us an overview of your four guiding principles that ensure the Coast Guard is ready for today and prepared for tomorrow? Sure. Well, my sense uh, in the two years before I became commandant, and, and I, I was never sure I was going to be commandant. Somebody asked me the other day, is, uh, how long had you been planning? And I said, never. I, in fact, I was ready to retire two years ago. My wife had renovated our house in Fairfax County, and uh, we, were, we were ready to move on with life. Uh, I was very fortunate and, uh, and blessed that Secretary Napolitano chose me to, to be the commandant. So many of these things that I was concerned about in my previous assignment, which I saw a lot of stress on our workforce, so it's just not the ships and the aircraft, it's also the people. We'd been through 10 years of rapid growth since 9-11 and uh, a lot of increasing responsibilities. And in addition to those increasing responsibilities, both my predecessors had embarked upon major structural um, reorganization within the Coast Guard. Uh, Admiral Collins, who was two before me, uh, did sort of a field-level reorganization for all the right reasons, and, and I agree with what he did. Uh, and then Admiral Allen had taken the upper level uh, of the organization and attempted to do some restructuring, which inc included a need to get an authorization bill from Congress to do some of these changes. And he never got the bill during passed during his four years as commandant. So when I came in, uh, there were all these activities going on. Neither one of the restructurings had been completed, and it was taking a lot of institutional energy out of us, and, uh, and I thought uh, having an impact on our operations as well. So I came up with this first principle of steady the service, which really goes back to my roots as a sailor. When, whenever you feel like your ship is a little out of kilter, you've got to shift ballast and get your ship steady, because if you want the ship steady, uh, you've, uh, it, or to perform its missions effectively, you've got to have a steady ship. So I, I just use that as a metaphor for what I wanted to do with the service as a whole. I wasn't going to bring any wholesale changes, any restructuring. What I wanted to do was complete the reorganizations that had already been embarked upon. The, uh, the second one was uh, honor our profession. Uh, as I've said in some of the early responses, we've got a long and distinguished history with this country. Uh, we've been interwoven with almost every significant event that this country has, uh, uh, has in its history. And uh, I was a little worried that because of all this stress on our organization and because of a rash of accidents that we'd had, both aviation and surface, that perhaps we might be losing our edge a little bit. So I wanted to refocus on professionalism, uh, building up the proficiency of our workforce, perhaps even cutting back a few responsibilities in order to focus on those core uh, competencies and, uh, and professional efforts and operational arts that have distinguished us over the years that perhaps had deteriorated a little bit. So uh, we regained our focus there. The, uh, the third is uh, strengthening our partnerships. And uh, that was just a recognition of, once again, I said, we can't do 100% of everything that's given to us on any given day. So we rely upon partnerships within our own department with Customs and Border Protection, uh, uh, ICE uh, and other homeland security agencies, but we also depend upon the Department of Defense for some of the things that we do. And in our ports, we build coalitions with uh, state, federal, and local partners uh, that have interests in the maritime, and I would say also industry as well. So we want to work on developing and strengthening those partnerships so that we provide better service for the taxpayer. Uh, rather than recreate capabilities, let's look out and see who else is doing these so perhaps we can leverage them a little bit. And then finally, the thing that's probably the, the, uh, the pet project of mine is respecting our shipmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, my wife and I have both embarked upon a project to try and do better for our Coast Guard families, uh, trying to go back to rule number one, steady of the service. I think we transfer people uh, way too much uh, we uh, sometimes don't give people the opportunity to develop their competencies and their operational experience because we transfer them too quickly. So we've slowed down that process. In fact, this year, uh, just by 
uh, enacting a couple of little personnel rules in terms of trying to provide stability, we actually saved $20 million in transfer costs this year. And I know with the federal government, uh, going back to my mistake earlier, billions and millions, millions is still important for us. Uh, when we're talking billions and trillions of dollars, it seems like not that much. But for $20 million, that buys me 200 more Coast Guard people that I can employ or 200 people that we don't have to lay off. So uh, finding these savings wherever we can is very important to me. And uh, as I said, we're trying to improve housing and other things for our people. And uh, we'll continue on that effort.